Exactly. Now, all these ministers that are ministers, they've got constituencies. What are they doing in their constituencies to ensure that those cadres that you know fought along with them, that stood with them, what have they done about them? The Drug Enforcement Commission. Uh, I think it's either we change the name or the responsibilities. Because you know the name of an institution is the point of departure. Right. When you say Drug Enforcement Commission, it's like you are limiting it just to drugs. But when you go to their roles, there are a lot of things to do, you know, to curb corruption and other things that may not be drug related. Mm. Then why it's simply call it drug? Let's allow President Ed Galungu to exist as any other human being. This one individual that you beat in an election with a margin of one million votes, why should it worry you? One million Zambians decided that not President Lungu, yes, President Haka in the so why should President Daga in the HNM or anyone close to him be made to worry about President Lungu? You may not entirely blame the government for everything you know, happening because people are trying to be geniuses in, in manipulating the systems. Thank you so much. Mm. You've been watching the analysis right on KBN TV, the finest television in Zambia. <laughs>
on a sick chishimba camp leader. According to DPP, he feels that the punishment was not enough uh, to imprison Honorable Shimba Kambili was released on a bail, uh, of course, uh, pending uh, on bail, rather, uh, is not enough. He would have wanted or he wishes to have more, I mean, to add more further punishment beyond the five months which has been slapped on uh, Honorable Chishimba Kambili. On number six, a headline Mao Samba expelled. I uh, invited commas nine PF MPs at uh, John Sangwa uh, joins the legal battle to defend the uh, PF you know confusion. Number seven, uh, we are also going to update you with regards to what has been you know going on, talked about over the uh Kajale gold <coughs> land in Impika a district of uh, uh, Muchinga a district. So that's the story we'll be looking at where we are here. We, we, we've been told that uh, 120,000 uh, gold uh, uh, land in there has been allegedly sold uh, at the instigation of President Akendishima. These are the allegations that are coming through our ears. Number eight, Dr. Fred Membe says all the three arms of government have been compromised by the New Dawn government. Number nine, we are also going to update you about the recent uh, by-election results. Of course, this story was supposed to be discussed about, uh, talk about last week, but due to time, we decided to incorporate it this evening. And number 10, we also talk about uh, the, of course, uh, acquitted Zuma Nizimba, the former advisor to President Edgar Chogalungu, who is back again and he has refused to be silenced by the system after he was uh, uh, of course, incarcerated illegally. Number 12, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, says he will seek a re-election re uh, in March 2024. And lastly, from my menu, we will update you on the Israel war, which has been going on now for quite some months. Let me hear, of course, from my big brains in the studio. I've got our resident analyst, that is our boss speaker. Uh, is with me in the studio. PK, good evening and welcome to the analysis. Good evening, uh, IP. Uh, you're looking good in a white shirt like a Catholic <laughs> priest. <laughs> Are they going to say like uh, every night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so, yes. Right, good evening. Yeah. Good evening, thank you. How are you doing? And uh, good evening to our dear viewers. Fantastic. Let's hear from, uh, uh, of course, another man who is in a white uh, combat, but for him it's, it's a bit different because he's in a, in a tie. Ambassador, great. Trying to catch up with you is not easy. <laughs> so sometimes they try to say, should I be in a bow tie today or with crossbands? But then you, have, you just don't know <laughs> what, you know, uh, uh, I, uh, what, what our host is going to do. So sure. today I just wanted to be in white like you always do. Lovely. Our dear uh, followers on TV and on uh, radio and on Facebook, we are very happy and humbled that you always make time to be with us every Sunday evening. God bless you. Lovely. Let's see now from, I'll start with PK. I always want to leave the room, uh, you know, uh, for some of the topics that I may not have added on my script. Let's hear from PK in case there's something running, uh, running in your mind. Yes, most definitely. I, I was thinking actually as we were closing the week, I was looking at the performance of the kwacha against the major convertible currencies. Uh, it, our kwacha is running towards 25 kwacha to one dollar, running towards, but it is already at 30, um, 30 kwacha to one pound. Now that is already a major, major, you know, Sorry, challenge. Can you just say that again? The, the kwacha is running towards 25 kwacha to one dollar as at the close of uh, the week last week business week yes but the the kwacha is against um the pound at uh, 30 kwacha to one pound now that's dreadful and 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 when i was thinking about this i was reminded of a um a quote you know that i saw from the former uh, well from the current uh, head of state uh, mm. you know bali um, but then he was in, in opposition. You know, he was quoting some former vice president of uh, Ghana. Mm. And I think maybe there is actually even a clip as oh, well we, as... Yeah, yeah we, we, we will 
maybe at some point we can yeah. play that clip and speak to the fundamentals because what the president said then in opposition is pretty much where we are today, if, if not worse. Lovely. I'll get back to that. We'll start from there, actually. Let me hear from Ambassador. In case there's anything that you feel uh, has been left out from my menu this evening. Uh, for me, usually it's always the rising cost of living for most Zambians mm. when we are understanding that uh, an average family of six needs at least about 10,000 kwacha to live just on basics alone. And yet an ordinary person either does not have a monthly income mm. or gets about 3,000, 4,000 kwacha. And for me, I think this is very important because this is the Christmas month. When I was growing up, Christmas was very important. We used to think about eating chicken curry, you know, mm. and uh, having Fanta. And so I'm just wondering, maybe we should have included this story about Christmas because we are remaining with about maybe 10 or 15 days before mm. Christmas. Mm. I, are you guys going to have a happy Christmas? Mm. Happy New Year, happy Christmas. Is that going to happen? with the high cost of fuel and the high cost of millimil. So I, I, I just don't want us to leave this issue out. Right. Let me begin from where PK started from. Uh, you demanded for uh, this story because really it's important to uh, remind ourselves where we're coming from and uh, also to remind our leaders where and some of the sentiments they might have you know issued in the past that's the main reason why we've got the analysis to ensure that uh, we don't you know leave you behind now i hope director the uh, video is ready over the for, uh, former pre vice president of uh, ghana at the time was quoted uh, that was dr Muhammadu uh, uh, Muhammadu Baumia at the time. So let's see what uh, he stated at the time regarding the cost of living and vis-a-vis -vis the economy of uh, Ghana. But that message really, according to the main experts are saying, it was not only centered on Ghana at the time, but generally the entire governance of this world. Let's listen and watch. In an open economy with market determination of prices, exchange rate movements are the most important indicator of underlying macroeconomic fundamentals. As the saying goes, when in doubt, observe the exchange rate. The lesson from history for government is that you cannot manage the economy with propaganda. In, in fact, you can engage in all the propaganda you want, but if the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. All right, thank you so much. That's the video that was extracted from the speech which, deliver, which was delivered by the former Ghanaian uh, Vice President at the time, uh, His Excellency Dr. Muhammadu Baumia at the time. Now, coincidentally, gentlemen, is that uh, we are into December right now. This uh, it must be 10th today, if I'm not mistaken. 10th. Today is 10th, yes. 10th of December. Yeah. And uh, President Akende Shema in the opposition, he also tweeted something that was on the 9th of December 2019. 2019. Mm -hmm. All right. So this message is coming very well because we're discussing it in the December and the day after. Now, this is what President Akende Shema said at the time. He said, uh, good morning, fellow citizens. As we look forward ahead of a new, uh, new week ahead of us, let us reflect and draw lessons from the wise words of Ghanaian Vice President, His Excellency Dr. Muhammadu Bamoya, in a 
in an open economy with a market determination of, of prices, price, prices, e prices, exchange rate, uh, movements, and the most important uh, fundament indicators of the, uh, of the underlying macroeconomic uh, fundamentals. As the saying goes, when in doubt, observe the exchange rate. <laughs> the statement goes further. The lessons from this is that you cannot manage the economy with pr propaganda. In fact, you, you can engage in all the pro propaganda you want, but the fundamentals, if the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rates will expose you. This is what actually President Akenshema tweeted some <laughs> years back. And uh, I, I don't know what PK you picked from this tweet together with the video. It's very important to always uh, reflect on uh, history. And it's important <laughs> that, uh, coincidentally, as you said, this was uh, tweeted by the, f the president now, who was in opposition then, on the 9th of December 2019, mm. where he said, uh, if you can run the economy with all manner of propaganda you want, mm. but when you are in doubt, the mm. exchange rate will expose you. Mm. My question to the UPND government, does it mean that now the exchange rate has exposed you? Because really, uh, 30 kwacha to one pound, and where we are going, 25 kwacha to, to one dollar. dollar has the exchange rate based on that clip exposing the collapsed economic fundamentals you know and it's for me what is a key and critical here is that that is the message that president haga indechilema believed in in opposition now that is in power what does that mean to him ambassador what has gone wrong for me it is about making promises and whether you're going to keep them or not keep them. President Haka Inde Hichilema got a landslide victory, the only one ever after moving from the single party system where President FTJ got into power after 27 years of uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. One of the main reasons President Haka Inde Hichilema got into office is because he said our kwacha has continued to weaken. It is at 20. If you put me into office, I'm going to bring it down to 5 or 10. He even gave a timeline. Mm. You are buying your milli meal at 120 kwacha. When you put me into office, I'm going to bring it down to 50 kwacha. He gave the timeline. Your fuel is expensive. When I come into office, I will reduce it because I know that there is corruption which is going on here and there. Mm. I'm going to cut off the middleman. Your milli meal, which is the biggest thing for all of us, mm. is expensive because there is all this... Now, looking at the time, all these promises were made in 20 months, 24 months now. None of these promises mm. have been kept. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. We are looking for Father Christmas. Mm -hmm. We are looking for somebody to tell us that. Mm. Maybe you are judging President Haka in the Ichilema wrongly. Maybe he didn't tell you that the fuel prices will go down. Maybe he didn't tell you that the fuel, the, 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 the prices of uh, fertilizers will go down. Maybe he didn't tell you that the prices of all these other issues will go down. So for me, when I look at that clip that uh, PK was talking about, mm. I am looking at the promises that were being made by the president and I'm wondering, are we living in the same country? Are those screenshots <coughs> that are being shown now different? Has somebody lied about what President Haga in the HLM talked about? 
Because as far as I'm concerned, looking at what the Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection talks about, what the Law Association talks about, what the bishops talked about, the situation is bad. I, 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 I can't really uh, put as much gasoline in the car as I used to do mm. two years ago. Maybe you do. So maybe at this point, I should leave it at that and ask for you to talk with that. There was actually a, a, a comment that came from um, the Citizens First leader, Honorable Harry Kalaman, that regards as well, um, that look, when the president was in the opposition, he gave us all the formulas. And we want some of these formulas now to be, to be utilized. Where are they? The YC formula. Why is it today? Um, it would be nice. Let's watch this short clip. If at all it's ready, and then from there we continue with our discussion. We would like the president to employ his method, which he told all of us before he came into government. The president had said he would, that formula which he was going to reduce the price of petroleum, uh, the Y minus C formula. Uh, why has the president delayed in employing that Y minus C formula? We want him to employ that formula. He should not be wasting our time. All right, thank you so much. That's a video and a comment uh, that came from um, uh, CF President Honorable Harry Kalawa. Of course, uh, reminding the President uh, to utilize the methods that he had uh, promised the Zaman people to bring the cost of uh, either Millimu uh, down and also fuel down. But here we are, of course, uh, almost ending the year. That's what you were talking about, Ambassador. Just less than a minute and I come to PK, we wind up the story. Yeah, so we were promised and now we are looking for Father Christmas. Mm. Because as far as I'm concerned, the price of millimil is not going to reduce before December 25. The price of uh, fuel is not going to reduce. Mm. So looking you into your eyes, IP, I'm also going to look into the eyes of President Haka in the Chilema. President, what present do you have for Christmas for Zambians? Are they going to have a chicken? Are they going to have curry? Are they going to have rice? Or are they going to drink water? It's Christmas time. We need Father Christmas Haka in the Hichilema. Mm. Are we being so hard on the president? Um, as the Zambian people, uh, President Harry Kalawa, is he being too hard on the president? When we continue demanding or remind, reminding them about the promises they made regarding the high cost of millimeter and fuel, are we being so naive? I do, I do not think that the Zambian people are being hard on uh, the, the president or his administration. I don't think anyone is being hard. There's a <clears throat> saying that to whom much is given, much is required right. and unfortunately it is this administration that is in power and all the answers are required from them uh, especially uh, you know actually the the upnd in opposition you can actually say they were very hard on uh, they were harsh on not uh, hard PF. On, on pf yeah. uh, i remember the president then in opposition he would say these guys never pante pante chimbuino chimbuino plan they don't have a plan they are not taking us anywhere. I mean, <laughs> critically, if you were to ask, we don't, as citizens, we cannot see probably any difference between how, maybe there is actually a difference in the, in the sense that with the PF, you can see their focus on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. At least they used to hide mm -hmm. in infrastructure. Uh, the, 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 the UPND, they are somewhat trying to hide in CDF. But for now, there is no tangible thing that you can really point at as far as the CDF is, is concerned. While it is that on paper it sounds like a big number, a big figure, but go to constituents level, mm. everyone is saying each constituent has not yet received anything more than 7 million, for instance. So, yes, the number... Except Sunday Chanders. Yeah, maybe. Um, Can you hear? Maybe. Yeah, he's been receiving everything. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. 
maybe it's propaganda. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry to sidetrack so, you. So, so, so what I am trying to say, uh, IP, to yeah. answer you, I really don't think that the Zambians are being hard on this government. Mm. The Zambian people need to hold their government accountable, especially to the promises they gave them. UIP, the mm. reason why you went to queue up to vote, I don't know who you voted for, mm. but most majority of the Zambians watching us right now, they went and voted for the UPND mm. based on reduced millimil, reduced fertilizer, reduced fuel, reduced exchange rate, reduced inflation. But all of the five I have called out off the top of my head, none of them is going down. All of them are skyrocketing. So if you ask them to say, why did you promise us we voted for you and yet you are not sticking by what you promised? Mm. You cannot continue answering to say it is two years, give us five more, uh, judge us after five years. No. Right now we, begin, we need to begin to see that there is actually a, a direction that the, this administration is taking us in. But the Zambian people are demanding for those answers because they are not seeing any of those promises mm -hmm. becoming a reality today. The fight of corruption is not um, being realized as, as, as was promised. Uh, the fight against tribalism is not being realized as was promised. Mm -hmm. So there are all of these questions and unfortunately we cannot point at the, U, the, the PF who are, not out, who are not in power. No, We can only call out the government that is in power and unfortunately for them it is the UPND and they shouldn't feel that Zambians are being hard on them. Mm -hmm. It is just that Zambians need answers and they cannot seek answers from the PF. They can only seek answers from the UPND. Mm. Right, let's go to our first story now. Um, we've been in a somber moment as a country uh, for the past two weeks following the accident that happened uh, in uh, Chingola. And uh, like I mentioned earlier on, that uh, 12 bodies have been retrieved so far, and 12 of uh, the 13th one being a survivor. Quite, you know, sad, uh, sad story, but uh, good, the, the, the goodness that we've got one survivor who may maybe even help us to tell the whole story, uh, Ambassador, you know. It's a very sad story, IPA. Mm. Very, very sad story. Uh, the first time we spoke about it, remember we didn't have the real numbers, and we kept saying, eventually we yes. will have the numbers. Mm. But beyond the numbers, the story here, the bigger story, is what has happened at Senseli. You know, people still haven't managed to see the difference between Kasenseli mine exactly. and Senseli. <laughs> so there's Kasenseli in northwestern mm. province and then there's Senseli. But then that is probably not even a very big issue because people have died and others are being retrieved. This is a pure symptom of a broken down mm. system. What we should be discussing right now, in my view, and I would like to look into the camera to say, who owns Senseli Mine? What we should be discussing is, members of parliament went into our largest lawmaking body and said, the Zambia Environmental Management Authority said, it is not safe for this place to be mined. Right. And these documents have been deposited in the Zambia National Assembly and the Zambia Independent, the Zambia yeah. uh, Environment Manager Authority. Mm. So I, I, I am sorry, I may feel, I, I may sound as if I do not care that three people died, uh, some people have been retrieved and others are still undermined. But the challenge to the government and the challenge to the media is mm. who owns Senseli Mine? Right. Why was Senseli Mine allowed to continue illegally mine? Mm. Why have nobody right now been put on the spot to say some people have died? Why is the government and the Zambian people taking responsibility for an 
illegal activity mm. why who owns sincerely mine <clears throat> why have all these people died and nobody has come up to tell us who owns this because now people are talking about is this the same issue like we had about that copper at uh, uh, the international airport mm. with a private jet and armor, the copper, the gold that suddenly turned into copper or sink. Mm. This is different. There was copper, there was bullets, there was gold, and there were Egyptians that disappeared, but that was different. But in this case, there is Zambians who have died and they are still being dug out. Why haven't we been told? Is there a cover-up? Is there a cover-up? Why don't we know what is happening? And those people... Let me come out. back to... And you know, before, no, 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 before we even go yeah. to that, because we also had another story, mm about a truck of Mokola that overturned and we would have never even known about it hadn't it overturned. Mm. We still do not know who owns that truck. Before that, there was also a truck that was carrying things like lithium that was gotten by the Zambia Revenue Authority and we don't know about it. But going back to gold mm. again, because looking like there is a lot of cover-up going on. <clears throat> going back to the gold, we are also told that we, we are going to cover up how the case of the gold scam is going to be. It's not going to be in the public. Mm, mm, mm. If this issue of the illegal miners was not taken away, in t I mean, internationally. Let me come back to you shortly. Let me come back to you, Ambassador. Let me hear from uh, PK. Um, when the whole the story started, and uh, I think last week I remember, much of our emphasis here was uh, on the need for the president to go there and issue a statement on site, of which a day later I think he might have listened, he might have followed, or maybe his uh, lieutenants could have informed him he did go on site. But uh, regardless of that, again, we've seen that uh, people are still being trapped. What have you analyzed from this whole issue? Yeah, first of all, I, I want to uh, commend the, the head of state as the commander in chief uh, for having gone to, to site mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. is, he, he issued a, a statement that was rather consoling to members of the family to say you shouldn't mourn yet because we may find uh, some people uh, alive that that was that was quite a measured uh, a measured uh, statement um, yes the question that people are asking could it have made any difference if the head of state had triggered the response um, disaster response faster or sooner than he did mm. because showing up on site three days could have been a little too too little too late uh, we so far have one life retrieved alive yeah. the rest unfortunately they have been retrieved mm. not alive the question most people are asking is would it have made a difference if perhaps the head of state was in the country or the acting head of state the same day it happened mm. triggered the national response of DMMU and the commandos and everybody mm. to start the retrieval process but we saw that all of that only kicked in um, perhaps a day after the acting president issued a statement yeah. And the day that the president went to site, mm. that's when we saw concerted effort kicking in. So it is a very sad, a very sad state of affairs that we have a number of people still 
trapped. Mm. The question also, to add to the question that the ambassador is asking, who owns Senseli? The other question that the government may need to address to, to allay fears is some of the news stories we are beginning, beginning to read and listen to on radio that is it possible that some of the trapped miners are actually miners are actually are they qualified young people mm. is it true right. that some of the people trapped in that tragedy are young people miners m i n o r s are they part of the sad story in Chingola, the government needs to come out very clear on this issue because we are beginning to hear stories mm. that some parents of these children have been going to the DC's office and the council's office in Chingola to demand they want to know where the child is. Mm -hmm. So some of these are not trained minors. Mm. They are not even illegal minors. They are street kids, young kids from what we understand. But these are, this is speculation. We can only trust the information that will come from the government. Mm. And that's why we are putting it out here and appeal to the government, the chief government spokesperson, the minister of information, uh, minister of uh, mines, the minister of copper belt. Is it true children are part of those who are trapped underground? Please let the nation mm. know the truth. All right, let's go to story number two. Um, Unless, Ambassador, you want to chip in before No, I, I, I would love to. This is very, very important. Right. Just and, and less I'm, than a minute, you can go yeah, ahead. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because there is, it's, it's officially on record that the Zambia mm -hmm. uh, Environmental Management Association put it on record that that Senseli mining project should have never taken place. Right. Yeah, and uh, uh, my challenge to me is the Minister of Mines uh, and the President to say uh, what are the sanctions that are going to go on since the Zambia Independent Management Authority said that you shouldn't have actually even taken off on this. Now people have died and now we don't know whether they are miners and stuff. And for me, my fear from what we are understanding from other people is that there could be 10 other mining operations, illegal mining operations happening like this. Right. Yeah. We don't know. Just like we still don't know. We are still in a dilemma right mm. now over the one that has been openly exposed. So how many others are dying every day without us knowing? It's a symptom of a broken system in as far as employment and economic growth is gone. But Right. Mr. Minister of Mines, how many other illegal mines do we have that are happening? It's a de developing story. We'll come back to that, Ambassador. I know that uh, we may not exhaust it now. Let's go to story number two, uh, where now we are discussing about the education curriculum uh, of Zambia. You saw a statement and the big news that came in, the, I think, uh, four days, three days ago, that uh, the curriculum has now been redefined. Uh, what, what, what does it mean, just uh, for starters, Piki, I know that we will not spend much of our time because there are so many uh, discussions and according to the PS, we did mention a few days ago that uh, this process hasn't yet been approved so far. Yes, I, I, I think it might be a little bit too early to debate this issue right. because uh, <laughs> I have seen a small report, um, not too sure if it's true or not, but someone is quoting the Ministry of mm. Education uh, Permanent Secretary uh, saying the thing that we are seeing circulating online is actually a proposal not yet validated. Yeah. So that's probably the proposal, whether they were trying to test the reaction of the, the, <laughs> the nation mm. to leak it deliberately, because if it has not yet been approved, it is only supposed to be limited circulation within the Ministry of uh, Education and the Curriculum Development. Center. How it has found itself in mainstream social media, we do not know. But because the PS has said it is not um, you know, something that is approved, 
we may limit our comment on it because whatever we might say might be too premature mm. Uh, mm. and we might be told that uh, we are misinformed mm. or we are misinforming Indeed. the nation. So mm. let's After wait. After been informed. Yes, yeah. let's, let's wait for <laughs> the approved you know, curriculum right. or change of system then we can discuss whether indeed it is good or it is bad. For now, we treat it as speculation, speculation mm. and uh, not yet approved by the government. Did you pass through the standard one up to four, five? I went all the way Form to one. master's degrees, <laughs> going to PhDs. But <laughs> before I brag further, uh, I agree with uh, uh, PK. Right. Um, until we get whether this is official, mm. I think we should leave it at that. Right. But then for me, <laughs> it's about a disease. Right. So you gotta know where it is a disease. So you have to uh, get the doctor to mm. check what the problem is. Mm. So uh, me, I don't know what, what is the problem first with <laughs> the current Zambian education system right. is before we can go into the next stage. Lovely. So I'll leave it at that. Let's leave it there. Let's go to story yeah. number three. Um, now, the big story is that uh, on Saturday this week, we did see a heavy presence of police officers cancelling the first memorial service for the late Tutu Anguluwe, who was a PF, uh, you know, legal counsel, and also he was a member of parliament for Kawe Central. Pick it. It is... It is a very sad situation, actually very shocking, very, very shocking. I have never heard anything like this before. Mm. I, when I heard that uh, uh, the memorial has been cancelled, I thought it was just uh, one of these false rumors. But when I saw CDF police vehicles <laughs> and that green one there, and I'm told that they are stopping people from gathering the family members. I'm told they are traumatized yeah. because they've been forced to cancel what should have been a memorial for their brother, for their uncle, for a son, for someone who was for a, a comrade, for a comrade, someone who was a national figure. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just backtrack a little bit. Who was Tutu Angulube? Tutu Angulube was a, a former member of parliament. He was uh, a lawyer. Mm. A politician. Now, deputy chief whip. Deputy chief whip. Now, lots just, of friends. Lots of friends. Mm. But let's just hold there, right there. When I have attended funerals, mm. when an army general has died, a colonel has died, or even a police officer has died, the policemen mm. show up, yeah. well dressed, to mourn their In colleague. Battle dress. Yes, to mourn their colleague. Tutu Anguluve was a politician. Why wouldn't politicians show up at his memorial? Because he was one of them. Right. He was a politician. And it is required that politicians who he dined with, who he debated in parliament with, must show up to say what they remember about the man. Mm. Now, if, if really it is the issue that the powers that be had that ECL and the PF were going to turn up in their numbers to remember someone who was one of them. Why must that be any of anybody's business? Why must that concern whoever ordered the police to be deployed to cancel a memorial service for crying out loud for God's sake, in God's name? Why would you be scared that people someone belonged to a party that someone belonged to is coming to remember their colleague. Why would you stop a memorial? Actually, this action is beginning to confirm what other people are saying, that the, this administration is dead scared of ECL. The mention of ECL, ECL is scaring them. That's why they can cancel a memorial just when they hear that ECL will be, 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 be present. They are validating the popularity of ECL. Those of us who are not paying attention to ECL yeah. are now beginning to pay attention mm. to him. Mm. That what is the government scared about this former president that they should even be cancelling a memorial for one of his former lieutenants? Mm. 
So people are beginning to pay attention to ECL. Otherwise, ECL is a, a, a former head of state. He can attend any funeral, any memorial. Any but, wedding. Yes, any wedding. But if the government is deploying police in the manner that they did in Kabwe, we are beginning to say maybe the, 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 the UPND government knows something about ECL. The power that ECL commands, that we must begin to pay attention to. Yeah. I think we need to begin to interrogate, mm. especially after this, what is it that the government of uh, the UPND is scared about the name ECL? Right. Ambassador, I was you're, just you're, pushing you're that regard. In, in, in the same That's line. That's the headline there you are seeing on, on, on the screen there. Yes. Two tours family traumatized. Mm. One of uh, my uh, friends, I, I, if I had permission, I would have named him, but he said, mm. oh boy, no, but to a fuma, buku fumi efin to kuma political parties gatherings. No, but to ambo kulaisa kuma memorials. Don't you think very soon we shall move kuma kitchen parties? What is happening? Boy, what are we doing? As one of the friends of mine was saying that, regarding what we saw, and you know, it was crazy. I didn't see, I didn't see it coming to this. But just to push the envelope from what uh, PK Pastor said, I was reminded of a very important theologian and priest, a man called Martin Nimula. He is a, a, a German theologian coming back from the uh, Nazi era. So he is best known in the opposition for having come up with a poet mm. where when Hitler, Adolf Hitler, the fascist and the killer, was taking up everybody. He said, first they came for the socialists. And I did not speak. Then they came for the capitalists. Mm. I did not speak. Then they came for all these other guys. I did not speak. And then when they eventually came to me, there was nobody else to speak. Right. So I have been thinking and putting this to say, okay, first, they stopped the Socialist Party from having a public gathering. And we did not speak. Then Edgar Longo tried to have a march into the market, we did not speak. Then, Golden Party, Jack Selawe, tried to speak, we did not speak. Then, the Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection, mm -hmm. then the Jesuits. So, I am wondering, because, Fred Memmi, last week, this very week, said it's a very great concern and that everybody, <coughs> every one of us, Dr. Fred Member said, said, every one of us must be worried that what is happening to the patriotic front right now is not an assault on the patriotic front. It's an assault on national democracy. Mm. He says, I am not speaking about the patriotic front. I am speaking about the country because when they are through with the patriotic front, they're going to come to the socialist party. They're going to come to Golden Slav, uh, to, to Slavo's party. They're going mm. to come to everybody. To NDC. They're going to come to KBN TV. And to NDC. They're going to come. Mm. NBC, I mean, uh, NDC Sa right now. Savoy Mboya. Savoy Mboya is circulating. I wish I had sent this tape earlier. Mm, the audio. She is circulating the audio. She's circulating an audio where what has happened, what has happened, now I sound like uh, the guys from No Problem, what has happened? <laughs> what has happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, what has happened? <laughs> anyway, what happened to the uh, patriotic front is happening to Savoy in Baila. So, friend member was saying, we should not get worried. But you know, we are all so cozy, like, ah, oh, well, you know, it's just the PF. I'm not involved. Mm. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's just a way, boy, let's, 
You say, oh, well, when there's a problem next day at the radio station, and, ah, it's just Kennedy, and it's just Kennedy. Mm. You know Kennedy, and you know he's accused of being, yeah. But when all of these have been decimated, do you know what we're going to have? No democracy. No governments. And then all these issues, all this country that we have been looked at historically, Zambia as the last bastion of democracy in the southern region and beyond, it will all be gone. Because now what happened yesterday was shocking. I'm telling mm. you, it was crazy. And I want to put you on the spot together with the PK here as my seniors. When was the last time you covered a story of such a nature? When was the last time did we, uh, like, I'll tell you one thing. The story that I've covered myself is where maybe the political party cadres are fighting at a, a cemetery, you know, on, on the memorial, you know, day and stuff like that, but cancelling the entire memorial service. When was the last time? I will also remind that uh, a few days ago we did also see a story where, uh, I think that was in southern province, where the, with the, a lot of the, the, the army, the police officers that were went to salute at the you know, memorial service of uh, President Dagen Gishnama's uh, close, uh, late close associate. Why should this be different as you close? As I close, IP, mm. uh, 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 <clears throat> before I became ambassador extraordinary, and plenty potential before mm. I became managing editor and mm. editor in chief mm. of a newspaper before I won international awards. One of the things that I did is I covered stories, right? And I will tell you one of the saddest stories that I ever covered was mm. under President Frederick Jacob Titus Chilwa, FTJ, right. when he arrested President uh, Kenneth David Kaunda, mm. his predecessor. Yeah, and uh, I stood up. At that time, lots of people were very, very scared to do up. I stood up. It was on Christmas Eve, if my memory serves me like, uh, right. My God, this little polar thing. <laughs> if my memory serves me light. Uh, Anyhow, so I asked uh, President uh, Frederick uh, Titus, Jacob Chulub, I said... Uh, don't you think that you arresting your predecessor, Dr. Mm. Kenneth Kaunda, may bounce back to you? Mm. Don't you think you are setting a precedent that when you are no longer president, somebody may come up with trumped up charges? Mm. And I said this stuff, I was quite a, a bad journalist. I said, I said, don't you think somebody will say that you are Congolese and arrest you for something else? And then you see, FTJ said, uh, you know, president, mm. come on, guy. The only president I have made is uh, to remove a criminal from a maximum prison and put him in a house. And then I, I don't want to say I told you, mm. but you see what happened <coughs> to president. Uh, and the story we're talking about today, have, we, have you ever covered it? I, I am covered. Of a memorial we service are, being canceled. We, uh, that is my question. That, really. that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to just mm. say. Mm. I said before live TV mm. to President Frederick Titus Jacob, which will say, what you are doing here, don't you think you are setting a bad precedent? Mm. So I would like to say this 20, 30 years mm. later, President Haka in the Hitchin. <coughs> Don't you think you are setting a bad precedent? You are not directly, you haven't been put in the line of fire on this thing. But everybody is saying, Myro Sampa has no impetus to do what he's doing. The police have no impetus to do this. And you are a loved man in the region and the Western world mm. loves you. And now they are seeing, what they are saying is that the democracy of Zambia is diminishing under you. I am looking at you, President Haka, in the HLM. Don't you think 
you are setting a precedent where you will be judged and said you contributed to the deterioration or decimation of Zambia's democracy. Right. That has been grown from 1964. I could be wrong. I actually do not even have a rose or a dog in this fight. Okay. Well, for me, I just have a question. When is enough enough? When is it enough? When is it enough that the state could back the change of records for a party, a former party, mm. on a matter that is in court? When is it enough now to hear that what happened at Mulungushi, another similar police a protected event from what we understand is happening in Kagwe where some people who are serving in this government who are affiliated to NDC from what we are the reports we are receiving from Kagwe are that there is another conference happening in in Kagwe where NDC and mind you the issue of NDC is in court but we understand that there is a faction of NDC that is electing leaders and also under heavy police protection. When is it enough to abuse the police? Mm. What has government got to do with uh, police protecting a political party conference that is happening elsewhere? Which conference is contested in court? As to who and those are, are private meetings, by Those the way. are private meetings. Mm. So my question is, if these things continue, when is enough enough? When are we going to see an end to abuse of state institutions? To abuse of the police? When is it enough? I think we need to really come to a place where we, without anyone coercing us, we just have to come back to our senses. I think this trajectory we are going on is not a good trajectory. It's not good for democracy. It is not good for peace building. It is not good for unity. It is not good. We need to promote unity. We need to promote oneness. We need to promote coexistence. We need to promote multipartism. But we should not break the law with impunity. For me, what hurts is a leader, any leader anywhere, is supposed to be a, a, a builder, a, a unifier. It's supposed to be promoting unity, peace, development, moving in one direction. We should never come to a place where those that people of Zambia have entrusted with authority have said, IP, we give you authority. Super, superintendent over our affairs. You should never be in a place where you want to abuse the trust that we have given you, IP, mm -hmm. as an example. Yeah. So for me, I really question the people that would want to abuse <coughs> state institutions for their personal gain or private gain. A political party is a private arrangement. Does not warranty deployment of CDF police vehicles. So the question from Chibombo, is from Serenje, Chibombo, Serenje, you know, and the, all the central um, province constituents. Yes. constituents. Yes, that's what we are hearing is happening in Kabwe. So my question is when the actual picture. Actually, those are on video already. When is yeah. four vehicles are on video? When yeah. is enough? Mm. Enough. I think we shouldn't uh, allow these things to 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 continue happening. And Zambians. Uh, when you see these things happening, please speak up. It's your constitutional right. You have, you have a constitutional right to speak up. You have a constitutional right to hold your authorities that you have elected to office to account. Let them account for the decisions that they are making that somewhat are not in the best interest of you, the voters. Let me close, uh, gentlemen. We now look at uh, suspended uh, PF MPs who have an also independent uh, MPs were suspended, who have finally gone back to Parliament. And of course, in that regard, we did see Honorable Binu Mpundu, the Nkana Member of Parliament, uh, who has, uh, you know, gone back again with a similar 
or the same energy doesn't seem to relent <laughs> despite having been stopped from speaking from the presiding officer at the time uh, he still remained firm that I'm more than ready to be chased in as many times as you can let's watch this short clip then from there we will engage into the discussion which is why chairperson this is an important wing of the ministry of defense we must do so much to invest in ZNS so that they can go and preserve the resources of this country by monitoring that Mukula doesn't go out of this country because of the, the checkpoints that have been moved away. That is what we must be using the defense forces for. When they take away the checkpoints, there must be the defense forces who must be on the lookout so that our resources are not being taken out by selfish individuals. Those resources, chairperson, must, they, we must add value so that the country can have enough resources to attend to other needs. Chairperson, I have a problem when we spend $194 million, as per the report I've read on social media, on buying a presidential jet to safeguard the life of our sitting president. Equipped with o modern honorable technology. Member, honorable member, I've been listening to your debate. Sir. You should be very factual. You, you spoke about people being shot. Uh -huh. You don't have evidence to substantiate the claims. And we can't be here, seated, wasting taxpayers' money, listening to your social media browsing that you've done. I think we have got more serious work to do. Anything that you've gotten from social media remains at home. Here we are dealing with facts. So we can't be bringing the name of the president in, or presidents in disrepute basing on your social media interaction. So ensure that uh, be factual as you debate. Chairperson, because you are out of touch with facts, there's a boy in Kankoyo who was shot by ZNS. That's facts. Honor Honorable member, I've guided you. Chair, you want facts? The fact, sir, is that Honorable Member, government... may you take your seat? Take your seat. Honorable Katuta. What facts does he want? If that's not facts. Honorable Katuta. Thank you, uh, Chairperson, uh, for allowing the people of Chiengi to debate this very important uh, budget line. All right, you're still watching the analysis right here on KBN TV from Zambia's capital city, Lusaka. And of course, I've got my two um, PAF analysts in the studio. Uh, PK is here and also Ambassador Mukwita. Ambassador, I would want both of you to take just a minute each. We cruise. Uh, time is not on our side. But the video has been played. Yeah, you watch so that. We will not waste much time. Mm. Uh, Honorable Bino Mpundu uh, 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 put forward the mm. facts that a 15-year-old young man has been killed by a Zambia National Service officer. Mm. And another man lies in hospital uh, having shot again by a security officer. Mm. So he's saying, as we put money, he was supporting the bill yeah. for the Ministry of uh, uh, Defense, $9.8 billion. And then there is this guy, I don't know, what's his name? Um, Moyo. Moyo. Uh, Moyo. I am very sorry, uh, he's supposed to be the deputy speaker. Yeah. He didn't even understand that people have been killed, you know, and he put down a member of parliament who was telling him that you do not, this Moyo man, I don't understand. I really don't understand. It had to take the minister, it had to take an honorable member of parliament to say you want facts. It reminded me of a movie called A Few Good Men, where there is Tom Cruise and, uh, you know, Jack Nicholson. And you want facts? You can't handle the truth. So what Bino Mpundu there was telling Moyo that he can't handle the truth. Moyo does not understand that a 15-year-old kid was killed.
by a zealous official. Moyo does not understand that another man lies nursing his life. What kind of a guy is that? And that is a guy that you have as uh, what speaker. What? Deputy as a deputy speaker, can you imagine, God forbid, or whatever, I don't know what their procedure is, but that Moyo guy does not know current affairs. Current affairs. He attributes what a member of parliament says that mm -hmm. these are facts. He says that's your social browsing. What's that Moyo guy? I am worried. I am worried. Um, I, I'm sorry. I, I, mm -hmm. I understand, but I, I am worried if uh, if our deputy speaker of national assembly does not know current affairs. By the way, when we are learning civics, we were learning the functions of parliament and mm -hmm. uh, and the three arms of Gov of, government. of government. It is required the of the legislature, the administration. And the judicial. Yes, it is required of. We any, needed to know that. A bare minimum, bare minimum. Bare, of, 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 of anyone who qualifies to yeah. be a member of parliament and later on a speaker to understand basic civic uh, education. education. And one of the requirements is that you need to know current affairs at least. Yeah. You cannot pretend to be that ignorant <laughs> and sit in such a power, powerful seat. I, I'm sorry, but Mr. Moyo, I think we, we that for me is a vote of no confidence. He needs to go to school. He's, he's challenging a member of parliament on the floor of the house for oh facts. God. And the member of parliament produces Gives him facts. a fact that ZNS officer has killed a 15-year-old. It's in the public domain. Actually, it's in it was the newspaper by the police. And the police arrested, I think. Yeah. That is, yes, uh, and Moyo doesn't know it, and the so called speaker of the uh, deputy speaker doesn't know. Uh, then, what kind of leadership do we have, <laughs> Mr. Moyo? Please don't ever be that ignorant over uh, matters that are of national importance. The issue of debating the national security budget was very important, and the, a member of parliament was augmenting the argument to add substance, uh, you know, to the to the. To, to the to the to the debate and, and you don't shut him down and you can't shut him down for bringing out the Take facts. A seat. The door is always open. Let's the continue. Door is open. Let's continue on that trajectory again. Uh, the story of Mao Sampai seems to be you know changing shapes, developing into various angles. Ambassador, we did uh, see via social media that Honorable Mao Sampa, uh, of course, he did expel in courts nine PF MPs. You know, IP. what does it mean? IP. For me, we need to change this story. Mm. I would like to throw a challenge, right. not just mm. to KBN TV, right. but to the Zambia Daily Mail, right. to the Times of mm. Zambia, to ZNBC, to Hot FM, to right now stop calling Miles Samba mm. as a president of PF, to stop giving credence to Miles Samba as having expelled some members of the Patriotic mm. Front. It is despicable that news institutions that know what the values of news are can actually attribute stories to Milo Samba, who does not qualify to be a president of a party. When I used to be a reporter for local media, mm. When I used to be a correspondent for international media, when I became editor-in-chief, when I won international awards, I would be told, say, you know, we can't report on Michael Sata as being Cobra anymore. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, he's now the president. We cannot make that reference anymore. Say, so, oh, when I say, oh, uh, the drug uh, the trafficker, I say, no, we can't, because this man has now been cleared. So I am wondering, <clears throat> why is the editor in chief of the Times of Zambia? I'm looking at you guys. You know, we come from the same school. Why is the director general of the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation? Why? is the editor of all these newspapers 
referring to a patriotic front that does not exist. Because, you know, when you start perpetuating a certain narrative regarding something that does not exist, mm. you are giving it credence. Why is news diggers? Don't you think Why? that no, 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 um, you, you all, can't. This, or, or this story is Unless um, you are part of being the legitimized thing. by the, the, the judiciary, by the courts? No, no, no. You like have to take it. The court has legitimized no. the whole uh, amount. Uh, no. No, I, I, I am right. sorry, but uh, for, I, I'm sorry. I, I know mm. KBN, I know Brother P.K., we have worked for seven years. Of course, submit. You are a journalist. And you yes, are yes. also not feel shy to bring in these questions. That's no, that's why, no, that's why it's important. Yes. And I appreciate it mm. that you have brought this up. Mm. Because if you hadn't brought it up, I wouldn't make the challenge mm. to the editor in chief <laughs> of the Zambia Daily Mail, Times of Zambia, Daily Nation. Mm. To what? Why are you? Referring to Mao Sampa as a president, why are you reporting that Mao Sampa has expelled people when he has no legit local standard? You shouldn't. I reported once, I remember when I was learning how to be a journalist, I said, Oh, well, there are uh, uh, 50 generals uh, from the DRC have been arrested during this concession, and then my editor at Bloomberg would say, uh, there can't be 50 generals. So like, what do you mean? He said, who are you quoting? I said, I'm quoting Zerenes. He says, yeah, whether you are quoting Zerenes, it's wrong. I mean, we are quoting Zerenes, it's wrong. So what do you mean? He said, no, the largest army in the world is the United States of America. They only have this number of generals and this one, what? So this, you know, so there is, even if somebody tells you that this is what is happening, just report on what is true. So it is not true that yes, Mao Sampa is the president. Right. It is not true that so, Mao Sampa has. So what? It, so you, you take don't. Of the, the, the you don't. Expulsion. You don't. What, what, what do you make of the the purported expulsion? It's fake. It shouldn't be reported on. It should. If I was a newspaper on, we don't. If I was, if right. I had a newspaper, I would not report that Mao Sampa has expelled anybody. Lovely. Let because, me come back to you later. Yeah. Um, uh, PK. So what is true about Mao Sampa is that he's a member of parliament. That is not uh, debatable. That is true. So anytime <clears throat> anyone in the media is referring to Mao Sampa, I think the right place to call to, in fact, what is also true is that he's a presidential um, aspiring. aspiring candidate because he's one of the eight that paid 200,000. That's why John Sangwa and company, uh, Simeza, mm. have sued him representing the other aspirants. So, Miles Sampa, correct title is PF presidential aspiring candidate. And also, the other correct thing is a member of parliament for Matero, Matero period. Anything outside of that until the court pronounces itself to say yes, is a legit. Uh, president, it is under question. It is, is it's, um, it is, um, what do you call this? Um, when you talk about something that's before the, the law, Sub uh, it's contemptuous, it's, it's contemptuous yep. because mm. the court has not pronounced Maybe. itself yeah. to the fact that yes, this is the, the president of the party. To him. So you, you cannot validate him when no. the court have not. So no. he is a presidential aspiring candidate for the PF. He paid 200, 200 uh, nomination votes. fee. He is also a member of parliament. Under what party? Mm. Under the PF. So, um, and he is also expelled. And so for me, <laughs> what also validates the fact that no one should refer to him as president is because now there is a matter that is fresh before the mm. court, taken up by Sangwa and the uh, council Sangwa uh, and, 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 and others mm. to prevent Mao Sampa from presenting himself as a PF President. candidate. So it means there is already an injunction on Mao Sampa. He himself cannot refer to himself as, as president. As president. No. So who are we in the media to refer to him as president? Why does he seem to be more popular with uh, you know, the outcomes of the court? 
What do you mean popular with the outcomes with of the With regards course? to we've seen that Tony Bumosa, but it's not the first time we've seen him. He has already, you know, his impact is being felt on the ground. Go to parliament. The leader of opposition has been changed, has been replaced. The uh, chief whip has been replaced. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> hey, do you call that impact? Look, listen, what you are saying, IP, mm. what you are saying, IP, mm. is uh, those are the issues that are being challenged before court, the court yeah. of law. So where is the impact? And, and also, the popularity? one of the things that uh, members of the public are asking, mm. why is it that there is no grassroots PF that is routing and clapping for Mao Samba? Mm. There is more on social media, UPND supporters, who are clapping for Mbappe. Mm. Mao Sampa has now nicknamed himself Mbappe, yeah. Mbappe who is self -proclaimed. a self-proclaimed and this Mbappe is a, is a, is a French player. I would have been very upset. Mm. If okay. I, yeah. So if I were Mbappe yeah, also yeah. I would be upset. Yeah. So My now God. the issue yeah. is when you say there is impact on mm. Mao Sampa, mm. why are we not seeing more PF grassroots clapping for him and supporting him? Why are we seeing UPND cadres on social media clapping for Mao Sampa? That is what begins to raise a lot of questions to say who is paying Mao Sampa's bills? Who is Do you sponsoring think the him? speaker is going to react over you know, the purported expulsion as of mentioned? How do you think, I know that last week uh, the speaker, I didn't see Madame Nelly Moot in the, in the house. I think I watched from Thursday up to Friday. She wasn't around. Maybe you never know this week something might happen if no, that let, me, let me take that hmm. uh, uh, yes, let me ambassador. take that away from uh, uh, brother uh, PK the speaker has been taken to court speaker Nelly Moti has been taken to the constitutional court mm. for breach of constitution I would be very worried if I was Nelly Moti it's a huge thing Madam Nelly Moti recognized a person who had a club meeting and declared himself a president of a party. She's been taken to court for that. And analysts, experts, state councils, <laughs> such as John Sango, who has now taken up and joined into the issue, said, Mrs. Nelly Moti, you were wrong. Why did you recognize Mayra Sampa over an issue when there is a law that says that if ever there is an issue that is being adjudicated in the court of law because of the three arms of the law that mm. we have and, and, and respect, you should not touch it. Also, Mrs. Nelly Moti has not come back on that and she has allowed lots of issues to go on. We never saw initially John Sango State Council and Smeza, they just stayed on. What has happened? They have now decided that instead of just staying on, right. we should take Miss Nelly Moti to court. And I think the crimes have been piling up because you know, remember first, there's a crime, then there's a cover-up. If you remember, you and I being followers of international politics and jurisdictions, you know about the, 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 the Watergate, the Watergate mm. scandal. The biggest crime was what? It was the cover-up. Not even the first crime, but just the cover-up became the biggest thing. Right. Where is so, Miss Nelly Moti on this? So, Why has John Sangwa and Smeza come in on this? Why isn't Myro Sampa going to parliament? Where is Anthony Mumba? Where is Anthony Mumba going to court, uh, to parliament? Where is Chavinga? What's his name? Is it Chavinga, Chavinga or Robert. what? They don't go to court. I mean, they go, don't go to parliament. I saw Robert anyway. Chavinga on Friday, actually, during the vice president's question. He was in parliament. And he was he moved was. by his fellow members of parliament now to this answer big to, to answer your question we we do not as uh, the analysis we do not expect um, um, speaker Ned muti mm. to declare those nine seats vacant mm. why because she made a ruling yes when uh, honorable right, chito teller mm. uh, raised an issue on the floor of the house in the form of a point of order mm. to say why do we have Mao Sampa who has been expelled 
she said she doesn't have the authority to interpret Article 70, uh, 72.5 or thereabout. Mm. Okay? Um, it is now a similar issue that has come up with nine. We do not see her saying, oh, no, 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 on this one I qualify to interpret. So this is unnullified. That would be catastrophic. That would be unprecedented. That would be unheard of. <laughs> that would be historical. We do not expect the speaker to go against her earlier ruling. She never saw this one coming. If she saw this one coming, she could have done something on the earlier ruling. But she has tied herself. These nine will be in court, I mean, will be in parliament until court rules. That is what I foresee happening over this. Quickly, let's take a minute each. Uh, we look at uh, the happenings at uh, Kanyelele land in Pika district. And the allegations has it that uh, over 120,000, you know, uh, land has been sold in that area. Let me start, um, because this is a story that uh, I have followed closely. Mm. As you know, it is closer to home. Ch uh, uh, Mpika and Chinsari. It's closer to your home, actually. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, closer. Yeah. it's closer to my home. Hey. So this is a story that yeah. is close to my heart. And right. I followed it to the latter. You must understand that there is, a, yes, there is 120,000 hectares of land mm. uh, that is in question. Mm. was signed off by one of the chiefs there okay, to give to a, a certain named mining uh, company mm. because there is gold that has been found in that area. Mm. Now, the, royal, the Bemba Royal Establishment are very upset about that because that is their land. Mm. It's a traditional land that belongs to the, to the chief dome. In fact, it's, it's, it's stretched from chief... Uh, Chikwanda, Chief Mukwikle. Uh, so this matter is actually in court. The chiefs have taken this matter to court to challenge that matter. In fact, one of the chiefs there has actually been censured and uh, has been uh, punishment has been meted against the erring chief who is involved in that scandalous allocation of 120,000 hectares. And most people are saying, if indeed this uh, is the desire for another company from wherever and being back to by whoever, uh, rumor has it that uh, State House may be uh, involved in, in making sure that uh, that land where God has been found uh, is given to a particular mining company so that they can start mining. The chiefs are saying in that area, we better be allowed to form a company and maybe partner with it an investor, but not to say here is a mining company that has come vacate. Remember that land, there are people who live there. Ancestral land. Some of their ancestors are buried there. There are grave, there are graves in that same land. So to say vacate uh, just like that and expecting the royal Bemba establishment to back that that is a non-starter. Our royal, Bemba Royal Establishment are against it. The chief in question who was involved in uh, uh, selling off or signing off that 120,000 has been censured, is, is been punished by the, the royal, Bemba Royal Establishment. establishment and yeah. as I'm saying, the case is before the courts of law. Mm -hmm. So you can clearly see that it is illegal if that deal was going to go ahead, it is illegal. And the chiefs from the, ro the entire Bemba royal establishment, they are against it. So then who gives whoever the power to go and evict people and say, because God has been found. If it, God has been found, it's for Zambians. Mm. And let the chiefs in Zambia, the chiefs in, in, in Mpika there, allow them to form also a cooperative, even if it means under CDF. Mm. <laughs> yeah. and let them now partner yeah. Yeah. with that minor but this case is before the court so we cannot say much right mm. okay are the three arms of government compromised as um, alleged by dr fred member on story number eight ambassador before we actually go to mm. dr fred member i would just like to follow up on the issue right. with your permission yes, yes. mr Host. as we close yeah yeah 120,000 square kilometers of land 
is like the entire part of Europe. I'll just give you the size of Germany, for instance, mm. is half the size of Zambia. It's got 80 million people, more than the population of Zambia. Zambia. They are richer than us. They are the fourth largest in Europe, and they are the, the I mean, they are fourth largest in Europe and the, the largest in the entire world. Now, we have just given up a third. So I don't want to go through <laughs> what PK has already said. Mm. We are poor today, and yet we have so much land. For me, this story comes up to haunt us to say, who makes these deals? Who cuts these deals? Who gets paid? How did we reach this deal where we sold 120,000 hectares of our land? And then you know it's not only about this one where there is gold and stuff, because we understand during the COP28 mm. that we sold a couple of forests. This is official records. So first there is this one over the 120,000 mm. hectares. And then there, there's the other one over the forests. Mm. And then you know there is another deal that we signed with the DRC and the United States government uh, regarding Arab. Yeah, and the Arabs. So I don't know. And this is just what we know. What about what we don't know? Right. So, so what we are saying is that's why we need the uh, access to information bill. Right. Instead of letting the citizens speculate like this, yeah. it will be good for every citizen to have access to know have we entered into a strategic partnership with a dubai company over 10 percent of land uh, which company is this and what do they intend what are the to do what are the terms for how long who yeah. will benefit who will it impact which villages will be impacted what and will be the benefits? who will be effect, uh, evicted yeah. mm. we, we need access to information bill so that this thing of letting people speculate and you know what it is the challenge <laughs> ambassador if we, the citizens, the government has made the, its own decisions and the information is not sufficient in the public, you begin to speculate, yeah. the law enforcement will come to you yeah. that you are, alarming the, you are alarming the nation. Meanwhile, you are just a concerned citizen. Yeah. You are not alarming anyone. You are yeah. just saying, government, are you giving us enough Give information? Give us the information. Give us information so that we know and we are not going to be called alarmists. Yeah. For asking questions, is it true there is an Arab can... Uh, company mm. that is that going is to getting partner. carbon yes yeah you know and money it, and it translates to 10 percent yeah. of our is it true right uh, when will it we start get? yeah who signed when was it signed there is so much There's shrouded so much. into you know mystery yes lovely let me just get uh played with the director for only five minutes before we go i've got two stories that i want us to settle on the first story, Dr. Fred Membe is back in the news and now is alleging that the three arms of government are compromised. And again, his sentiments have been, you know, uh, is like re-echoing to the sentiments of ECL when he held uh, the press briefing. That's exactly what I wanted to say when I heard you ask this question. Mm. That it's not just Dr. Fred Membe who has said that. I heard it when uh, ECL held the press conference recently mm. where he said for the first time, uh, three, all the three arms of government are becoming, in fact, he used the word, he said, uh, you have a mischievous. They have a meeting of meeting minds of mind and they are being mischievous. mischievous. Yes. So, this, you know, in, 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 in the Bible, they say, in the, in, in, the, in the place of three witnesses, a, met, a matter is established. So now we have had two opposition mm -hmm. political leaders. If we, if we hear another one call, say that, then we will know. They are making not an allegation, they are confirming what probably is happening as, as, as truth. So it is a concern. Mm. Because ideally, when the state does this, the judiciary must say the state overstepped its boundary. So this is an, an illegality. You cannot have a matter being challenged in court and the DPP rights to say, no, I am not granting permission to prosecute. Mm -hmm. Why? Allow prosecution to happen so that the court can, can make a make determination. A determination. Yeah. You can't outrightly uh, just oh, rule God. out justice 
process and say, I am not giving consent to prosecution of this case. So that is why Dr. Fred Membe has raised that concern. That's why ECO has raised that concern. And that's why you're bringing it here for us to, to discuss. And yes, it's a matter of concern that we don't seem to have separation of powers anymore. Mm. I agree with you. And I won't even go further because right. my brother has said the exact same thing that I wanted to say. Uh, uh, sixth is President uh, Edgar Longo said, uh, we will fight for uh, preservation of our democracy, legally, uh, publicly, mm. and uh, politically. And uh, that we are concerned that, uh, you know, there is, seems to be a meeting of minds uh, between the three arms of the government, which shouldn't be happening. A day after that, we see Dr. Fred Membe, president of the Socialist Party, a scholar and political analyst, who comes and says the same thing. But remember that they are not the first two to say that. We have seen this coming up from, uh, you know, uh, Madam Chishala Kateka. We've seen this come uh, up from uh, uh, Brother uh, Kelvin Walefube. We've seen this coming from, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jackson Chilabwe. We've seen this coming from uh, uh, our brother, um, uh, Harry Kalava. We have seen this coming from all the major civil society groups, the Catholic bishops, the evangelical fellowships of Zambia. So, uh, mm. and, so. And, and just, uh, yeah. just to read uh, uh, feedback from one of the viewers here mm -hmm. in the inbox uh, coming through saying, you are right, we are concerned as citizens because as citizens we are major stakeholders. God is not making land anymore. We cannot be selling 120,000 hectares. God is not making countries anymore. Mm. God is not making land anymore. Mm. God is not uh, creating more deposits for God. We only have what we, we have. only have what we have. So There's no new creation. We shouldn't be giving it uh, to whether it's the Chinese or America. No, we should have God. God is not creating yeah. any more Zambia. There's mm. only one Zambia. And we hope, we hope and pray that the authorities will be able to give a statement in this regards because this story is, you know, getting more stronger uh, each and every day. And if you talk about 120,000 hectare, hectares of land, that's it's not, it can't be given by either a minister of lands, that's beyond. Uh, it can only be authorized by the sitting head of state. Of course. From where I stand. No, 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 not even from where you stand, yeah. even as you sit. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I, can give, I already gave you an example. Germany is a half the population of Zambia. Zambia is 750,000 square kilometers. Austria, German, Austria, Hungary, the entire Europe. That's half that, what you're talking it's about. Country. Yeah, yeah, it's half of this. Finally. So, you know, if you give up half mm. of what the European Union is, half of what the European Union is, to whom we don't know. And we don't know how much we are getting of that. Mm. I, I, we, I think, are we the only ones who are crazy and asking these questions? I think we're a crazy nation. I think we're a crazy nation and I think sometimes we have suspended our thinking. I will tell you there are many people who are dying. 120,000 hectares. There are many people out there who are dying that Zambia, if only Zambia was in Europe, what they can do yeah. with the mineral resource that in this, is in this land, what they can do. And us, we are ready to say, hey, IP, come and get 120,000 years. There is God, actually. Yeah. Yeah, as we, a bonus. We don't have use. <laughs> As in Zambia, we have no use for God. And by the way, don't worry because we also have mines and uh, we just scrapped off their tax, uh, you know, issues. So, you know, they can mine and, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to lose about $3 billion a year. Does uh, CK Chimba Kambiri, who was released on, on bail, deserve more punishment? It's for the courts to decide. As, uh, the okay, for the court, uh, uh, as a brother has said, it's for the court That's to decide. That's the reason why I brought it here. Because yeah, but the DPP I, I, I think for seems me, to be unhappy. no, no, no. For me, mm. is it shouldn't be. Justice should be justice for everybody. Mm. Justice should be justice for IP. Justice should justice 
for PK. Mm. And uh, when you see justice being selectively put on the table, where the director of public prosecution or the attorney general now mm. comes up and say, we need bigger punishment for this person, then it's not it's not justice just about anymore. Justice. People just start wondering. Right. You know, it's the same thing, the issue that we have heard about where people are saying, why are you giving uh, John uh, 400,000 kwasha in composition because somebody pointed a gun at them? Why are you giving Jane 1 million kwacha because uh, uh, they stay the night in the cell? So in the same manner, we simply ask, and we know that Zambia has been known for being one of the best countries mm. in Africa where justice jurisprudence is concerned. But when the director of public prosecution singles out one person without justification for all of us, unless I, I don't know whether you've had any justification of why Chishimba Kamwili should get a much sterner punishment when others have not yet even been arrested yeah. or uttered similar. For me, I see, to answer that question, yeah. it is Justice not... Justice should be across the board. It is not for the DPP to decide no. on behalf of the judge uh, what should have been the rightful punishment. It's for punishment. the court. It's for the court to, de to determine. Yeah. It is no longer justice if it's me who is saying, no, 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 you didn't massage my ego. That's no. not a, the, the judgment you I don't expected. Like me. No. <laughs> if the court has done its due process and they've arrived at a decision, of course it's everyone's right to, to appeal. To question afterwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. But not before the process is complete. Because you know what, what, what the pastor is saying here. And I'm glad you brought up this. Is. Mm -hmm. What about Mr. Batuke Imenda? He called the Catholic bishops Lucifer's. He called them Satans. And according to people, that was hate language. We have the Minister of Education who called the people from Luapola, it's on tape, saying they have a poverty or a sickness of the mind. They haven't, as the brother is saying, they haven't even been arrested. Now, let us just say that under an unlikely circumstances, all this changes and there is a new government. And somebody says, this Watuke Imenda called the entire Catholic Church. He called the entire Catholic leadership Satans, the people who build schools and hospitals. Watuke Imenda called them Satans and Lucifers. He was never even arrested. No, 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 none at all. The Minister of Education, on the other hand, called the other guys sick of the mind. Never arrested, nothing, it never even went to court. Now, when it comes to, you flip the side of the coin and they come to court and they are given one month sentence, which the court probably thinks would be the right punishment. Turn the table around. And then somebody comes and say, no, it's not fair. I, th I want Mr. Watuke Imenda <laughs> to be punished more. The process hasn't completed. We have to go, Ambassador. PK, we have to go, your closing remarks. My, co my closing remark is this, please. Um, our government, we love you. We have only one Zambia. Please unite this nation. Please bring everyone on board. Please help to close all the anxieties. Let the people rejoice. The Bible says when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. Can we back to the, go back to the principles of the word of God? God loves justice. God loves peace. God loves unity. The Bible says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. There, the Lord commands a blessing. Listen, if we are not united as a nation, the blessing of the Lord will not come near us. God does not 
bless where there's confusion. I can go on and preach, please don't provoke me. Because when Jesus, <laughs> Amen. When Jesus was to feed multitudes, they brought uh, you know, a hand for fish and, and five loaves of bread. But he never caused the multiplication until he said to the disciples, let people sit down and sit in groups. And that's when Jesus prayed for that bread and fish and multiplied it and gave it to the disciples because now there was order. The blessing can multiply. In the absence of order, peace, and love, the blessing of the Lord will not be our portion. My appeal to everyone in government is unite this nation. Let there be love, let there be peace, and the, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding be our portion. We love you, we are praying for you because the Lord has commanded us to pray for you, and we are doing that. We expect you to do the right thing and not to break the law with impunity. Thank you so much, PK. Man wears so many hats. You know, he can easily switch and uh, begin to analyze in a biblical way. Maybe that could be one of the strongest approaches that we can take sometimes on the analysis. Ambassador, as you go. Let me just go on that spirit of love mm. and unity <clears throat> that uh, PK has said. President Haga in the HLM, you won an election because people believed in you that you bring in love and unity. You won an election because people believe that you would reduce the price of many milk. You won an election because people believe that you would bring down the price of fuel. You won an election because people believe that you would unite us. We are in the season of love the season of spirituality, the season that Jesus Christ, our Lord, and Zambia being Christian nation, were born in. All of us here, I know none of us here, and everybody who is listening to us know that we believe in love and unity. President Hager in the talk to the police, because you say that, uh, you know, they should not arrest people without investigating. So maybe these arrests that are going on are not your fault. President Hunter in Asia, but is it true that uh, the police could have gone to the late Tutan Mulube's family to cancel a memorial on instructions of the government? I don't believe it is true. But anyway, that's a discussion. For another, another day. day. Yes. What we want to do tonight is the spirit that, you know, Pastor P.K. has come up with us. Okay. That we love Zambia, we love the president, we love our country, we love President Ed Kalungu, we love Fred Membe, we love the entire opposition, and that we know that united we stand and divided we fall. Right, thank you so much, uh, Ambassador. And, and by the way, uh, uh, coming through, yes, IP, yeah, you're a great man. Wow, you continue on doing yourself. I'm you actually know. tapping into the spirits nah. from you and PK. <laughs> 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 thank you so much, Ambassador, as well, for coming through. And also, PK, we appreciate you for coming through. You know, when uh, you were, you know, seemingly preaching at the end, I said uh, maybe this is good because uh, sometimes if we can't follow the constitution. Let's follow the Bible. We follow the Bible. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Allow me to appreciate you, the way we have been calling in. I know even now uh, we seem to have some challenges in terms of uh, our phone line. I hope we can accommodate you come next week on Sunday. But uh, nevertheless, come on Friday 2030, we'll be able to watch this episode for those that could have missed and of course that could have joined us along the way. Thank you so much. When is our repeat? Friday. At Friday 2030. Yeah, thank you so much. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night.